Participation in the city council meetings is not allowed at this time, and the council chambers are not open to the public. The mayor and council members may be attending this meeting via um, Microsoft Teams. The public may also attend via Teams and may submit any comments in writing prior to noon on the day of the meeting by emailing djones at cityofneedles.com. To join the live Teams meeting, log into the City of Needles website at www.cityofneedles.com slash city dash meetings slash city council to assess the agenda and click here to join the meeting. Or listen in the participate, listen in and participate by calling Microsoft terms at 1-323-438-2227 Meeting ID number 608-599-336. Pound. Call to order. Roll call. Councilmember Campbell? Here. Terrell? Here. Merritt? Here. Padgett? Here. Phelps? Here. Longacre? Here. Thank you. All right, please join me stand for the invocation. Remain standing while uh, we have the Pledge of Allegiance. For a moment, let's direct our prayers to our mayor who's in the hospital in Lake Havasu. Our Father in heaven, bless this town and its citizens. Guide our council and city staff in their judgments and deliberations and bless those who travel the desert highways to come to our crown jewel in the desert. In God's name we pray. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Your Honor, Your Honor, are we need an excused absence for the mayor? Pardon? An excused absence for the mayor? All right. We'd like an excused absence for the mayor at their motion. Um, I'll make a motion to excuse the mayor's absence. I'll prove it. Okay, we have a motion and a second for excused absence. Council Member Campbell? Yes. Terrell? Yes. Maris? Yes. Belt? Yes. Longacre? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Approval of agenda. Do we have a motion? I'll move. I'll move. We have a motion by Bell, a second by Merrick. Call for the vote. Council Member Campbell? Yes. Terrell? Yes. Merrick? Yes. Bell? Yes. Longacre? Yes. Thank you. Conflict of interest. Are there any conflicts of interest? Report? Seeing none. Correspondence. Do we have any correspondence? Uh, yes, uh, Your Honor. We have um, a memo from. Uh, Robert and Ruth Lopez regarding agenda item number nine, 
requesting to add three large potholes on Grandview Street be added to the list of street improvements. Yeah, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'll, I'll address that. Yeah, go slow. Those are easily fixed. All right. Introductions, we've seen introductions. The no, I, uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd, uh, let me reintroduce you to uh, Battalion Chief Scott Tuttle. Welcome uh, uh, to San Diego County Fire Department. He was here once before, but he's back. Thank you for being here this evening. City Attorney, John? Yes. Would you like me to read over the rules of procedure applicable to tonight's e meeting? Yeah, did you want? Yes, please. Yes. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, the council has previously adopted rules of procedure for conducting city business. And so I'm going to touch on some of the uh, relevant rules for tonight's meeting. The mayor or presiding officer is responsible for the maintenance of order and decorum at all times. No person should be allowed to speak who has not first been recognized by the chair. All questions and remarks should be addressed to the chair. A council member once recognized shall not be interrupted while speaking unless called to order by the presiding officer. No member shall be allowed to speak more than once upon any one subject until every other member choosing to speak thereon shall have spoken. Public members attending council meetings shall observe the same rules of order and decorum applicable to the council. Thank you. As a courtesy to those who intend to ask that cell phones be turned off or put in their silent mode. Thank you. Public appearance. Persons wishing to address the city council on subjects other than those scheduled or requested to do so at this time. When called by the mayor, please announce your name and address for the record. In order to conduct a timely meeting, a three minute time limit per person has been established by municipal code section 2-18. Amendments of California Cal government code section 54950 prohibits the city council from taking action on a specific item until it appears on the agenda. Uh, we have public hearings on uh, one, two, and three that have been uh, forwarded to February 9th. Public comments pertaining to the council items, uh, therefore, is a staff will be delayed until February 9th. Consent calendar. All con matters listed on the consent calendar are considered to be routine and will be enacted by one motion in the form listed. The mayor or any member of the city council may pull an item from the consent calendar for discussion. Prior to council action, a member of the public may address the city council on matters scheduled on the consent calendar. A three minute time limit per person applies. Recommended action, approval of items four through eight on the consent calendar by affirmative roll call vote. Are there anyone like to pull any of the items? I do. I want to pull five and seven just member belt. because I would like to talk, I mean, announce these things and talk about them for a minute. All right. Anyone else? Is there a motion? Otherwise, I'm going to approve four, six, and eight. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion by Bill. Uh, second by Longacre. Call for the vote. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Terrell? Yes. Merritt? Yes. Bell? Yes. Longacre? Yes. yes. Thank you. Councilmember Bell? Five, I just wanted to bring up um, again the city's um, ongoing efforts to continue to lower everybody's or tax or rate payers um, price of uh, power and I mean many kudos out to the city employees rating for I mean again was this Rick you said the yes third, uh, uh, third uh, decrease in the rates in the last five months yes uh, this is the uh, Mr. Mayor uh, yes. Councilor Bell this is the third rate reduction that has been done in the last five months uh, and to a large degree it is uh, Randy Torrance, our assistant utility manager, uh, uh, correctly forecasting our our dependable load amount and not having to go into the spot market, which can be three to ten times what the regular rate is. Uh, she's doing an outstanding job on that. Uh, the utility board uh, considered this last Tuesday and unanimously uh, recommended that this 
uh, savings pass through uh, accrue to the customers. Thank you. We often just don't give enough um, kudos to these guys. So again, thank you. We continue to try to lower the, effort, the rates for all our rate pairs. And that's it for them. All right, and you have uh, item number uh, seven, was it? Yeah, I just want to reinforce the idea of um, buying properties and needles that we are holding everybody that buys these properties accountable, that we want to see, we want to see you utilizing our great rates that we are giving to do the best we can to improve our city. This is, Rick has been, and um, Patrick have been working hard to get some attainable goals for Mr. Ashot. We hope, we wish him the best and we want him to succeed because this is a great endeavor, um, but we really would like to see some actual, some um, goals being met on this one. So Rick, if you want to just kind of give a heads up to the rest of the council. What? Yes, uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, yeah. Councilor Bell, uh, the square block uh, in downtown, uh, we first uh, entered into a purchase and sale agreement in September 2019. And, uh, but due to COVID, uh, Mr. Ashot Manassian was unable to uh, uh, do substantial construction, which was a requirement. Uh, the council considered uh, the breach uh, by not fulfilling that and uh, at your direction we met with his team and laid out in steps A, B, C, D, and E uh, the interim steps that need to be accomplished. Uh, uh, within the first 45 days uh, have a pre-development meeting uh, which will audit all the permits that are going to require. And then within the next 105 days, uh, file the zoning permit application. So rather than wait to say a year uh, where we don't know whether it's a breach until the end, uh, there are milestones which each uh, that he's agreeing to uh, as well as us that keeps this moving forward. All right, is there anyone else like to discuss this matter? Oh, the, app uh, the applicant's on the phone or the purchaser's on the phone if he wishes to say anything. Any questions? He needs to unmute his microphone. Okay. I can't do it. Mr. Menagian, will you please unmute your microphone? Hello? Hello, can you guys hear us? Yes. Yeah. Hi, hello, Mr. Mayor, hello, Council members. This is Savan Benlian and Ashot Minasian. Uh, I am helping the applicant put together the application, and we are we are gathering uh, a very very good team, de design team, to basically design a really nice project worthy of the city of Needles. And we thank you for. Uh, for giving us the extension and we're looking forward to working with you Patrick and his team has has been amazing and they gave us a lot of time and they put in a lot of effort and we want to materialize this and, and get it to a real project so we're excited thank you we appreciate you guys thank, thank you very you. much all right is there a motion I'll move to approve I'll second it's item Seven. Approval for items on number uh, six, or, or, or number seven. five and number seven. Oh. All right. I approve five and seven. Okay, we have a motion by Councilmember Belt and a second <coughs> by Councilmember Campbell. <coughs> Call for the vote. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Terrell? Yes. Barrett? Yes. Belt? Yes. Longacre? Yes. Thank you. End of consent calendar regular items number nine. <laughs> Adopt the first year phase two street improvements of the pavement management plan by uh, the various city streets. Staff report. Yes, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, as you recall, we did a slurry seal program uh, last spring. Uh, we did about uh, $600,000 of slurry seal on a number of streets, Third Street, Front Street. Uh, up in the Gates area and uh, I think my place road. Um, after that, we were to get into uh, grind and pay. We had 500,000 that or 400,000 that we did not spend during the slurry. Uh, we figured we'd get a better price 
if we saved that money and made it part of a larger program. Uh, so we have uh, $900,000 of cannabis money that's available to put towards that. We have uh, uh, $253,000 of Major I funds uh, that we can apply to this program. And we have uh, SB1 funds of 152, which are state shared revenues. Plus we're drawing on the Jack Smith Park uh, maintenance uh, fund and the water asset replacement fund. So if you go to the chart, It'll identify um, six or seven road projects. Uh, the first focus is up on uh, near the schools for uh, safety of uh, parents delivering children and children. And so we're going to uh, grind and pay and replace water lines uh, in L Street, uh, Fairmont Street, Washington Street, Bailey Avenue, uh, and that Bailey Avenue all the way from Washington to J Street. So that covers all the major streets up in that neighborhood. And then we're also doing uh, Aaron Drive, uh, which uh, goes from Bailey all the way to Coronado. And then in next year, we'll have that last link of Coronado done uh, which matches up with the improvements that were done three or four years ago. Uh, so we'll be able to focus on uh, another part of town. In this in this list of projects, uh, we have included uh, what I'll call the bad section of Needles Highway. As you recall, uh, from 600 feet short of River Road cutoff, we uh, did that project and reconstructed that road. Uh, during that construction, the bids came in a million and a half dollars of savings on that. So the county is going to take those savings and extend those improvements that came almost to River Road cutoff and do about a mile and a half of reconstruction. After that, there's a an area of patches on patches on patches on patches, and it's a terrible driving surface. Uh, our uh, plan <coughs> is to go in and scrape out all those patches, uh, levelize it, and uh, lay two inches of asphalt, which will create a new smooth driving surface. And then after that, and that should give us anywhere from five to 10 years of life up there. In the meantime, we continue to apply for uh, road funding uh, from the state feds for the $10 million, which will be needed to make this a permanent fix and go all the way to uh, the end of the city limits line. Uh, we also include in the, in the priority areas the uh, O&P Street reconstruction and uh, when the J Street uh, project was done, uh, it uh, left some areas that need fixed, particularly on the viaduct or the railroad overpass. Uh, our goal is to get that uh, uh, fully uh, uh, done. The next uh, patch projects are you to and so that, that all comes to 2.072 million. Then there are some utility projects, and that is Broadway Avenue, where we put in from the wastewater treatment plant up to Ice Plant Road, uh, we need to do the permanent patch, or the permanent fix, as opposed to the interim patch that we put in place, which requires a half street improvement on that, on that section of the road. And then Flora Vista, there were some a utility patch is there, Coma Street the same, and then the D Street overpass. We did repairs with cold mix, uh, which are interim, but we will do a smooth surface uh, hot mix uh, patching of that section. And then, uh, and that will come out of the uh, waste or out of the water asset replacement fund because they are water assets. Uh, then the last project is Jack Smith Park uh, a launch, the boat launch uh, parking lot. Uh, 
it has uh, we collect money for the launches and set aside four percent a year uh, for maintenance of the pavement. Uh, that's proving to be inadequate, but it gives us so far we've collected about 72,000 in that fund. So we're going to need to revisit increasing that that uh, maintenance uh, set aside. But our goal would be to a first uh, resurface and restrike the boat launch parking lot and the Jack Smith Park parking lot where there's 60 spaces and then to uh, do the road all the way to the top of the hill up by Verde Shores. And then eventually take on the rest of River Road. So the engineer's estimate for that work is approximately 159. We have 72 in the fund. Uh, we can move, could move, if these numbers hold up, money from cannabis to, uh, to get that uh, part all fixed. Now, I've included in your packet maps of the different segments uh, that you can see. And then uh, actually there's there's three maps, the last of which includes the uh, from Smith Road all the way up to Ice Plank Road. Um, so if the council concurs with this list, which was in your priority payment management system list, then we will go out to bid because right now these are just engineers estimates. So at that point, uh, we will get back in probably four weeks, but we'll come to you in about six weeks with what are the hard numbers. So right now we're estimating at about 2.7. If it comes in at 2.5, you'll have the option of capping that, saving the money to the next time we do this in the fall, or adding a project. If we go over, then your option will be to cut a project or to apply additional funds uh, because by then we will have another two months of cannabis revenue collected and we're taking in about 180,000 a month. So uh, you're going to have those options, but we don't really know which course yet until we get these hard numbers back. So we will return to you in about six weeks with hard budget numbers and a strategy on the over under. Uh, and that's uh, my report. Glad to answer any questions. Thank you. Uh, yes, the discussion. Uh, Council Member Longacre. Um, on, on the Jackson Park bid, uh, you said you had take 4% and it isn't cutting it. What, what percentage would cut it? I think a number closer to about 8%. Uh, uh, because the 4% assumes that you repay it every 25 years. Well, that's not enough. Not uh, uh, you know, a pavement, a pavement like that should be, it should be repaid. It should be slurried every five to seven years and it should be repaid every 15 years. Does that have to go to the vote of the people? No, it's a, it's a fee uh, that you, as long as it's dedicated, that you have the ability, council has the ability to uh, to establish. Thank you. All right, uh, further discussion? Uh, yeah, Your Honor. Council Member Carroll. Uh, yeah, uh, Rick, I had a quick question. Uh, with uh, Reese Slurry sealing the Jack Smith Park, can you find out the cost of slurry sealing um, the roads inside the Needle Cemetery as well? Some of them are looking a little. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, underwhelming. Yeah, let me make a note of it. Thank you. All right. And, and we go. might also get a, a prize for slurry sealing the golf course parking lot. But yeah. yeah, there's a couple other, and these are, you know, minor amounts, seven, eight, ten thousand. Yeah. 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 My, my thought, Rick, my thought was if they're already here to do the other one, yeah. um, it can't cost too much more to have them do another parking lot or a couple of little streets versus bringing them and all their equipment out for a separate occasion. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion, Dr. Uh, Councilmember Bill. I just also want to remind everybody we have we hired a company, a third party company, to come in to assess these on the streets on which one needs to be done. So this isn't any of city staff, anybody saying these streets need it more 
than the other. This is actually a third party company coming out and letting us know how we can maintain our roads as a 15 year plan. So this is, we are trying to follow the plan to, ma to maintain the roads that we have and replace them year by year according to the plan. So, I mean, I am happy, I understand potholes and things like that that we need to fix, but I think we need to stick with this plan so that we're not saying, oh, we're, I'll change it for you, we'll change it for you. It's just, we stick with what the third party engineering company came in and said, this is your ideal way to maintain the overall entire system of roads in the city of Mules. Thank you. Just, just a, okay. Further comments by the council? If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'll move to approve. I'll second. We have a motion by Councilmember Bell, a second by Councilmember Longacre. Call for the vote. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Bell? Yes. Merritt? Yes. Bell? Yes. Longacre? Yes. Thank you. Item 10, resolution number 2021 02, regarding appointment council member as the delegate and as the alternate to represent the city of needles at the southern california Associ association of governments um mr mayor members of the council uh this was on a previous agenda and there were some questions raised the appointment isn't made by the city the appointment is actually made by the san Marino county transportation authority so this would be who you want to nominate to them to be our district's representative at SCAG. So the appointment will actually come somewhere else. This is just who you want to nominate as as a candidate for that appointment and an alternate. And the present present members are uh, Mayor uh, Williams and I am the alternate and I want to continue. I um, I would ask to possibly be considered as one of the delegates, po possibly the alternate. I think it'd be something that'd be really interesting and I'd like to learn more about how we can represent ourselves and what I can do to bring needles forward in front of everybody. The SCAG meetings are held in Los Angeles on the first Thursday of the month. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. I'll go. Nominate the delegate to be, or the delegate to be um, Doc Paget and the alternate to be Kristen. Yeah. We have a motion by Councilmember Bell, a second by Councilmember Campbell. Call the vote. Councilmember Campbell? Yes. Carol? Yes. Merritt? Yes. Bell? Yes. Longacre? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> City Attorney's Report. Yes, uh, briefly, Your Honor, um, just to report on some of the things that we've been working on on behalf of the city. Um, first, I wanted to report to you that after the last council meeting and when the council directed us to pre prepare and file an amicus brief supporting San Bernardino County's uh, lawsuit challenging Governor Newsom's uh, COVID restrictions. Um, about two days after that, we received a word that the Supreme Court issued its ruling. And so uh, th that effort became moot. And uh, there was a ruling issued by the Supreme Court without a published written opinion. Um, but that case is uh, drawn to a conclusion. I, I have reached out to the San Bernardino County uh, counsel, legal counsel, and uh, I've spoken to her briefly. Um, but uh, right now, uh, the situation is that uh, the Supreme Court ruled against the county on that case. So there's no there's nowhere to file a brief at this point. So I wanted to keep you up to speed on what was going on with that. Uh, in addition, we've been advising the city on issues related to can the cannabis industry, including reviewing live scans. Um, and for the new council members, that's when uh, employees come in and they want to work at a cannabis facility. They have to go through a live scan background check. And uh, there are questions that come up uh, in terms of uh, whether a past conviction would would uh, bar that employee from uh, being qualified to work in a facility. And, and so we deal with those issues and work with staff on them. 
In addition to that, we've been handling a number of code enforcement matters uh, for the city, uh, working with city staff on those. Uh, we worked on uh, purchase and sale agreements for, the, for city land transactions that have been authorized by the council, including the uh, uh, settlement agreement and attached documents that were in the packet this evening on the extension uh, granted via the settlement to uh, Mana Mr. Manassian. Um, advising also the city on Brown Act questions and conflict of interest questions as they arise. Uh, we prepared an audit letter for the city as part of the annual audit process. The auditor reaches out to our firm and asks us to give them a status report on any litigation up through the end of the last fiscal year. And so we uh, we we did that. Um, we also advised the city on labor and employment matters uh, as those issues arise and uh, in addition to that, we also have been advising the city on CEQA related matters um, and advising the city in connection with a uh, with conditional use permit applications and uh, also advising the city in connection with the neighborhood stabilization program. And then lastly, uh, today the city clerk received a lawsuit that was filed against the city by the Rio Buena Vista Homeowners Association for breach of contract, estoppel, and declaratory relief. So that came in today. We've begun to review that, and we will be uh, meeting with the council in a future closed session to discuss that matter in detail. And so that's my report this evening. Thank you. City Manager's report. Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, let me start with uh, COVID. Um, as you may have seen by a recent news reports, uh, the governor has, uh, as a result of ICU beds uh, opening up or not 100% committed, that he took us uh, back to the tiered system that is managed by the county. We're in the purple tier, which is uh, tier four and widespread uh, existence of the virus. Um, it, but one of the things that did change, he revoked the mandatory stay at home order. And uh, so gatherings of uh, uh, three families or fewer are allowed. Uh, he allowed uh, 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 outdoor dining, uh, didn't open up indoor dining. Uh, there were a couple of uh, uh, salons, nail salons and hair salons uh, can be open, uh, but we still, uh, there's, it still stifles our business community, uh, the rules that are still in effect. Um, so we miss the county's uh, success in their losses. Uh, there's uh, reported 289 cases uh, that have occurred in the city uh, overall since March. Um, we, a question came today to me about when does work on the underpass start? Uh, after you all approved it, we <coughs> met with the, uh, the low bidder and gave them the requirements of documents they need to provide to us like liability insurance, uh, general vehicle insurance and the like. Uh, there they have 10 days to provide that, which I think is due Friday. And then um, uh, they've also identified that they have put in uh, the order for the steel, uh, which is the only thing that can really delay it. So I would expect that project start in the next 30 days uh, so we can get uh, moving on with that. I've had reports of uh, graffiti on a sign down the train park. Uh, Someone sleeping under one of the rail cars. Um, uh, we've had a problem on Ice Plant Road of trucks uh, going back, turning around, or parking back there. Uh, there are all kinds of uh, excrement that uh, result from that. So Public Works went out and put up a fence uh to stop them from <clears throat> occupying that area 
Now there's it's it's a through street because it, it, that's how ice plant uh, cannabis uh, gets to their building. But uh, with limited that, I understand uh, from uh, an individual that uh, it's uh, it's created problems. The trucks can't. There's not enough room for them to turn around. <clears throat> My observation is if they remove the boulder in the parking lot at in the shopping center parking lot that they could do a turnaround there or they could do a turnaround within the parking lot of the shopping center. So, well, they don't want to allow that. They want a, that turnaround and then mass to be left on our property. Now, that's my opinion. We think that it's one of their tenants. Uh, it's one of their responsibilities and tenants to provide adequate parking in turn for their customers. So we're meeting, uh, I think, Friday uh, with the uh, store representative. We want that store to stay open, uh, but uh, we don't want to be the janitor for what's left behind by the truck drivers. Um, and then also, uh, I came to a conclusion in consultation with uh, uh, Mr. McGraw, who's our IT uh, specialist. Uh, these monitors are too big. We need, we need to send them back and get small ones, smaller ones, about the size of a laptop, a 15 inch or 17 inch laptop. Uh, or we need to embed them into the surface of your desk, of the dais. So like it would router out a spot and it would set flat within the dais structure. Um, although you all can be seen from the camera, um, I've received complaints from counselors that you can't see the audience when the audience returns. And that kind of communication between decision makers and the public is important. So. Uh, we're working on a solution there. Uh, that's all I have for right now. I'd be glad to answer any questions or uh, feel free to call me anytime. Thank you. Councilmember Campbell. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <coughs> Councilmember Terrell. I have nothing this evening. Thank you. Councilmember Merritt. I have no request, but I just wanted to say um, we've been. Councillor Campbell and I have been going through the training. We've been learning a lot through the League of Cities. And thank you to um, City Manager and the City Clerk for all of your assistance. And it's going really well, and I appreciate learning more about everything we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Um, Councilmember Bell. Sorry. Um, um, Oh, the street. I'm like, I know there's something. I'm going to get in trouble. Um, the street on Lily Hill, the crosswalk. I think it was brought up before by another re resident, aka my husband, um, about a crosswalk on that. He said it was going to be repainted. You know what I'm talking about? Casa yes. Linda and Lily Hill? Yeah. Uh, yes, please uh, go ahead. It was, but it's due again. Oh, okay. So that's it. Councilman Longer. That's all I got. Yeah, I got a couple things, Ron. Um, after that statement on Jack Smith Park, uh, I'd like to request a discussion on changing that percentage at the next meeting. Um, and uh, I was coming into town the other day, and uh, we have freeway signs that are at car level that reflect. Then we have elevated signs that are up high. Uh, <coughs> from coming into town from Vegas, not one has lights on it from the edge of town to J Street at least. Those need to be turned on. Caltrans needs to get on that. Um, do we have an ETA on uh, the new skate park fence? Uh, the, uh, we got, uh, you yes, please go ahead. Um, we, we did, uh, uh, because we believe it's going to be less than fifteen thousand dollars, a lot purchasing policy allows it to do us to do it by informal bids. So uh, Dennis has secured one. Uh, one of the companies he talked to had no interest, and he, so he's looking for a third company to give us a price. 
and he's got the layout design, which would be a chain link fence at the perimeter of the concrete. So right now those, uh, I'll call it rod iron, but it's not, uh, is in inside, inside of that perimeter. So uh, we're looking at uh, uh, adding a chain link fence and getting prices. So I'd say uh, you, sh you could be in a position at your next meeting of issue awarding a bid. Awesome. Uh, but but we'll, we're working on that. We actually looked at why do we need a fence at all and concluded that uh, if there's ever a vehicle, even though they're not supposed to be driving out there, we have a fun ride. That, that's, uh, <laughs> that presents a high risk opportunity. Yeah. So, um, can we look into a, a small park grant to repaint that park? Is that possible? Uh, I do believe there's mural grants. Um, so, something to look at to get rid of the patchwork and graffiti. Yeah. And then the last thing, still, I plan on doing a cleanup on Ice House Road, not this Saturday, but the next Saturday. So I guess after your statement, I'll bring a shovel. <laughs> and uh, I would like the dumpster put up there that day. Thank you. That's all I have. Thank you. And I have nothing. With that, I'll adjourn the meeting. Okay, we have to log off. <laughs>